<clears throat> Make sure everything's working. Live. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Morning Magic, the most fun you can have on this entire YouTube channel. Every single Friday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we get together, talk all things magic and trading card games, have some coffee, and try to kick off our weekend on the right foot. Cheers to each and every one of you out there. As you guys know, I try to reserve the first sip in the morning. That's right, on Fridays, I go my whole morning, dadding it up, trying to just hold out. No coffee until I talk to you guys. So here we are. This is a reprieve for me. Yoko, be loco. Good morning. Welcome to the stream, Yoko. I hope you are having fun. If you are here early, if you are stopping by Friday Morning Magic, if you've never stopped by Friday Morning Magic, if you're here every single week, hear what it is, come in the chat and say hi. This is the difference between this and a YouTube video. I get to chat with you guys. This is the big draw here. Thank you so much for spending your time with me on this wonderful, wonderful Saturday Eve. Screen Watcher. Good morning. What is up, Screen Watcher? Thanks for hanging out. Screen Watcher is a channel member as well as Devin Mychan. You can join the channel membership, get discounts on box openings, access to early content and custom content, and you can help support CardboardFinance.com. Five bucks a month. There's a link around the channel somewhere. I didn't put it because we got the Discord. Everyone's coming in from the Discord today. Discord's been popping off. If you want to join the Discord, that link is in the comments section. Good morning, guys. How you guys doing? Drew, bro, what's been going on with Fallout Super Foil prices? Listings for the numbers are major hits. Things look crazy. Well, now you know, Drew. We will look into it today. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, did you guys hear that? My dog. My dog has found an intruder. Scruffy looking gaming. Good morning, Scruffy. Good morning, Scruffy. Expert, Scruffy with the expert beard on site. Thank you for stepping in this morning and hanging out, Scruffy. We've got a ton to talk about this morning. I cannot wait. We have all of the games chasing Magic the Gathering, trying to track down the king. We have, oh, what's this? We have all the games chasing, trying to track down the king. We have TCG player bonus buck sale for sealed product. Oh, we went to my uh, my backup YouTube channel there for a second. It is going to be a wild day as I make sure I have everything set up, everything configured and ready to go. But without further ado, let's dive in. And we already have a topic right off the bat. Drew said, what's going on with the Fallout Surge foil price as well? You know who can get to the bottom of that? This stream can. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of the Fallout Surge foil prices. So this search is going to have to be weird. We'll have to go Surge foil in Magic the Gathering. And then we'll have to go Universes Beyond Fallout. Okay, we'll go cards here we go okay we have found we have we have nailed it down you have to do a rather confusing search to get here tcg captain nothing what's up welcome to the stream we are looking at surge foils for fallout oh wow rad storm surge foil all right hold on let's let's see I would think that things like Ravages of War, things like the Soul Ring, this in Surge Foil has got to be just an insane card. Yeah, exactly. I would think the Surge Foil Soul Ring is popping off, and this is popping off. Drew, look at the price moving on Wasteland, for example. What Are you saying it's going up or going down, Drew? Fill us in. Fill us in. Hook us up. Oh my goodness, look at this Wasteland. Did we do it? Chat. Did we do it? Who remembers the goal? Who remembers the goal? Who remembers our nefarious goal for the TCG market? That we were trying to manipulate the Magic the Gathering market. Who remembers? I, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Come on. This is a good one. We are trying to manipulate the Magic Together market because, for those who don't know, 
am collecting. Those familiar with the stream, big shout out to you because you know this. Those who don't know, I am collecting the player reward series. All of the original player reward series. And one of the most expensive cards in this series is none other than the Wasteland that I said, hey, hey, everybody make the other one popular. So this one tanks in price. Come on. What's a near mint? One of these. It's coming down. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Guys, we're doing it. Anyway, sorry. I don't mean to derail. That was, that's just hilarious. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Oh, Drew said, we think we might have manipulated the Magic the Gathering market. Listen, that is just the power of this live stream. Sometimes we can move the entire mountain that is the Magic the Gathering market because this stream is that powerful. Check out the Enchanted Elsa price these days. Scruffy, when we get to, when we get to Lorcana and looking at stuff, I have questions for you. So make sure you stick around for that. That's awesome. Okay. So, wow. So these prices look like they're coming up pretty high. The problem is like in the surge foil, there are still some, some super not great hits. Look at the farewell. Search for farewells, $125? Guys, what's happening? Guys, what is happening? It's a $125 card. And, like, people are buying it. I'm so confused. All right. That's insane. Search for prices are going crazy. What... Like, the soul ring makes sense to me. This is a cool soul ring. Hey, this is the thing I hate about Edge. This is a cool soul ring. I like I like this soul ring. This is neat. I don't know. 100. What's? All right. Like, I don't know. Am I a magic boomer? Am I a magic boomer? If I'm paying that much for a soul ring, I'm just saving up and getting... I'm just saving up and trying to get, like, an even cooler soul ring than the one that came out yesterday. Look, a, a beta... You get a beta soul ring. Ah, uh, no, you can't. You're getting a damaged one. I'd say that price seemed too good to be true, and it was. <laughs> price seemed too good to be true, and it was. A limited soul ring still cool? Ah, that's... That's crazy. That's crazy to me. Wow. Look at how many printings of soul. Oh, this is going to include all the boxes that you can get soul ring in. <laughs> Go cards. Only give me soul ring cards. Not tournament legal. Yeah, look at the, this galaxy foil soul ring from Secret Layer is cool. I don't know. The Surge Foil Fallout soul ring. I, I guess if you're a fan of like the Fallout series, that's pretty cool. I. I'm just saving up. I'm getting a different soul ring. I'm just saving up and getting a different soul ring. That's just me. All right. So we got to dig further into surge foil prices here. Let's get let's get rid of some of this. Gosh, look at that wasteland. Look at this. I'm going to keep this here cuz I want to keep I want that to come down in price. Crucible of Worlds is is a lot cheaper for a surge foil with with the surge foil prices doing what they're doing. Crucible of Worlds seems Seems cheap. And then now we start getting into... Oh, is there any, like, weird... Weird Fallout border? Yeah, Vandal Blast here. Here's a weird... Even Vandal Blast. Look at a Vandal Blast. Look at this. Guys, this is wild. Was there a bio? There's two of these things? That's crazy. All right, let's take a look. Let's see if this is reflected on sealed product. Devin says, I'm going to wait for Soul Ring Masters. <laughs> I bought 10 Soul Rings for my LGS for $10. Not worth 125. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, art is subjective, and if you're a fan, all that fun stuff, yada yada yada. I don't know if I'd pay 125 for that soul ring. TCG Captain says you are a magic boomer. Hey, TCG Captain. Cheers, and cheers to all us magic boomers out there who like weird things. 
He said you kept about the Hail Caesar pre-con deck. Let's go. Did you buy any of the Fallout pre-cons? I'm still waiting. Luckily, I think they're going to be readily available, but I will buy the full set at least. The full set to sleep up and maybe even the, another full set to put on the shelf. Because I like, I, I don't have a set of Doctor Who. I did not, I did not buy a set of those for the shelf. I gotta I still got I still gotta do that. I have I have some chores. I have some magic chores to to pick up. You know what I mean? Drew says personally I'm rebuilding the uh, the Caesar precon entirely surge foil, so for me these mark conditions are kill Oh my gosh, that's gonna be an expensive deck. Drew, that's quite that's quite the endeavor. Good luck, good luck. Old world McMac lightning bolts in the chat. Thank you so much for hanging out. Good friggin' morning surge foil prices. So let's Let's go, let's go a bit beyond. Let's just go Fallout, Universe Beyond Fall. Let's go Sealed Products. And like, hey, this thing's back on the up. The Collector Booster Box is back on the up, and that makes sense. Listen, the Surge Foil prices, being what they are, really lend to this thing doing well. There's not a giant... You know what's, what's interesting here is, hold on, let's pop over to the, to the TCG player. There's nothing... There's no giant barrier. So we pulled up uh, Universe to be on Fallout Collector Booster Displays. There's no giant barrier of a seller with, you know, 16, 24, 36 of them or anything like that. There's just some individual retailers selling a box or two here and there. If we wanted to buy four or more, I mean, we're into the 450s and we're looking at six. There's no massive retailer just kind of setting up a roadblock where we, like we see with Modern Magic. Saying, hey, we got to sell through you know, 150 boxes before we get to a price that's any different than this. So this thing, I mean, the community seems to have settled around what we're willing to pay. We're at 424 from, shout out to uh, EBO Collectibles. Yeah, random random game stores, random sellers on TCG Player get shout outs on this channel all the time. Shelton Spellbook is looking nice. Not sure it's worth the $40 and better off just buying singles after. Is that the secret... Sheldon Spellbook is the secret layer, right? I believe that's the morning. Mac Attack 20. Good freaking morning. I believe, yeah. Okay, so Sheldon Spellbook. Just quickly, quickly on this. We evaluate prices a lot. We get into the secondary market. We get into how people like us spend our money. This just seems to be, you know for a decent cause right like this is just this is just a cool little shout out this is a cool tribute i i probably won't ever do any valuation on the price of this product i'm not interested in that i'd rather let this thing just exist as what it was meant to exist at as i love that this is going to be print to demand this is going to be everyone who orders them gets them they, they flipped back to their old secret layer model that they just flipped away from for this. Th this makes sense to me. It shows, hey, we're not using this as an opportunity to try to create some weird FOMO. Like, yeah, they will make money off this, but I believe the that there's a statement from Sheldon saying he loved doing it, like he wanted to do this. So I, I, I won't, I won't, you know, based on someone's legacy and memory and stuff, criticize this product hard. I'm, I'm, I have no interest in doing that. Josh Smith, whoa, Josh Smith, welcome to the live stream, welcome back, maybe the best Josh on this entire channel, welcome back, I'm back baby, I read that in Bender's voice, <laughs> Ralph says we, Ralph, always some of the most complete insights on all of the topics I talk about, and Ralph, a big motivator, people like Ralph in the comment section wanting to have these discussions, a big motivator to bringing back the Discord that you can see in the pinned message. If you're in this stream and you haven't joined the Discord yet, jump on in there. It's free. It's open to everybody. You can invite your friends, and we have had some good conversations in there. Plus, I share, I think, for those in the Discord, should I make the Coffee Crew channel? I was debating making the Coffee Crew channel and posting my coffee every single day just to shout you guys out. And have like a run of people that are just like, oh, we need caffeine, but here we are. We're getting through it. We're doing it. We're we're living the life. Those in the IRL channel saw my sump pump went out. Oh, that was rough. That was rough. That was rough. <laughs> 
Uh, you know what? Here. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about the poll topic really quick. Let's talk about the poll topic so I can start a new poll about the coffee channel. Should I make the coffee channel the Discord? And we have the vote. Do you like that games are taking attention from Magic the Gathering? 59% said yes. 41% said no. That's a lot closer of a percentage than I would have thought. I would thought based on the, I guess, level of aggravation that us on the internet often feel with Magic the Gathering, we would like that there are other options. But I love that, like, hey, deep down, we all recognize, what are we fans of? We're fans of Magic. We're just, we're Magic the Gathering fans. We're not going to get away from that. That's our heart and soul. And I would just much rather have Magic continue to be good. So that's that's my take. So I, I that is much closer than I ever thought it would be. Did you guys think it was going to be that close? That's wild. Rob Boobsama, good morning. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining the stream. Should. All right, here we go. Should we start the Coffee Crew channel in the Discord? Vote one is hell yeah. Vote two is TCGs only. Only. Only T. I come to the hometown TCG Discord for one thing and one thing only. And it's TCG news and updates. Nothing else. Let me know your thoughts. And the beautiful thing about Discord is if, if, if we decide to do it and it's not for you... You totally mute the channel. Maybe I'll make a role that you have to sign up for and you won't see it if you don't like the Coffee Crew channel. That way, I don't interrupt anybody. Brendan Sullivan, good morning. I've missed a bunch of these lately due to work, but made it today. Welcome, Rob. Yeah, I noticed, you, I noticed your name was missing, but listen, people have life. So for those who don't know, we have 8% store credit and what 11% for subscribers. So I expect today to be wild on tcg player we are the sales data tracker is running unfortunately we won't have complete data through the end of the stream a this thing takes time to run it grabs hundreds and hundreds of thousands i i looked at this the other day and it scared me i looked at this the other day and i was a little bit blown away like this is just since the start of this project, the number of sales records that we have captured, that the channel members have supported a project that has gathered, that we have built a history, a snapshot of our life in Magic the Gathering here. It's crazy. They, some of these numbers are insane. I know the Pokemon scraper is running right now. We just started Pokemon, and like, we're getting to the bottom of a ton of... The, Pokemon's popularity on TCG player. It's 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 a controversial topic, but like we have numbers that we can put to this conversation now. It's so fascinating to me. So fascinating. Wow, I'm excited to see what the bonus buck sales sale does. I I think the bonus buck sale is going to be big for Disney Lorcana. I think there's going to be a lot of Disney Lorcana purchasing on the bonus buck sale because the box is already in an affordable price range. We will, we'll see though. I, I think we're going to see a lot of that. Not to mention, not to mention, Star Wars. Sorry. And now I'm demonetized. Great. Great, guys. Now I have to take a sip of my coffee because I'm demonetized. One thing I do want to talk about this morning when we talk about Magic the Gathering is probably the most successful standard set that we've seen in years. And it's time to talk Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Because this thing is absolutely nuts. Let's check on the health of the server. Make sure everything is still moving normally. Oh, man. This thing is picking up a lot of data today. This thing is picking up a lot of data today. All right. Let it do its thing. I want to talk about just this product, the sealed box of this product. And... Like, this should be the target. This should be where we're trying to go. Ralph says, I think they need a good competitor. They've been such a model for so long. Having a true threat should drive them to make MTG better. I would hope so. I think the same thing. Seven foot. I don't know if I've seen you in the chat before, but hey. Welcome, and we appreciate you tuning in. 
So let's get to the bottom of some of this. And I know the easy topic to talk about here is the Lost Caverns of Ixalan collector booster box. As two recent collector booster boxes between Fallout and Lost Caverns of Ixalan are, well, let's just call it what it is. These things are pumping. They're absolutely pumping. But it's more than just the pump. Things like this should, we should have magic products strive to be like these two examples, right? We have a Universes Beyond premium expensive product that's meant to, you know, command a higher price point and all the things that Wizards of the Coast and all the goals and blah, blah, blah. And like, hey, no matter, regardless of what we think about that and how we personally choose to spend our money for each of us out there, like it's clearly going well. It's selling in insane numbers. It's the morning of the 22nd right now and we're already selling a ton of boxes at the $400 plus price point. But it goes beyond that. It's not just like, hey, expensive magic product sells. The Lost Caverns of Ixalan collector booster display is a wonderful example of a healthy standard Magic the Gathering scent set. This is like what standard sets should strive to do. And I don't mean just like, oh, go to the moon. This is, this is why we have this. This is the purpose. This is the window. This is the meaning. We don't just want Magic the Gathering sets to pop off and go to the moon and go crazy. We want them to hold their value and we would like it if they went up in value over time, indicating that we, the fans, covet this box. Well, the Lost Caverns of Ixalan Collector Booster Box has done just that. It was just a healthy Collector Booster Box. Look at the Collector Booster Box since it's release. We're sitting at $229, $216, $227 average price first three months of release. Then $227, $235, and up to $260. So we have a collector box that you could have picked up that sold a bunch released in November at an average price of $227 and went up in value over time. This is it. This is the thing. Guys, this is, this is the thing. This is the thing. It just, it comes out, it's stable. Your game store can make money. Fans like us like it. And we clearly like it because look at how many of the boxes we freaking purchased. And over time, it holds, retains, and maybe even gains a little bit of value because we're actually pulled to the product. <sighs> this is just a win. Like this is what Magic the Gathering sets should strive to be, but it's not just the collector booster box, right? Like, guys, this isn't like, oh, Tendy Pump Town. Like, no. This set booster box, too, is holding like a game store making money. Set booster box is printed to infinity. Infinity. How many of them out there you want? Yep, you got it. Boom, nailed it. Just printed like crazy. And guess what? A game store is still making money on this product. Like, still making money on this product. Still. It's, it's from last November. They're still making money. Like, this is just such a wildly successful product. People have bought the Commander deck. The Commander deck set has gone up in value. It has retained some value. Uh, this is also due to Commander deck sets are weird because it's often like, hey, one Commander deck is amazing and expensive and all the other Commander decks are like kind of fine. Read to Leaf. Hi, mister. I watch you fab and poke fan. Nice. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for hanging out. Graphics said, unpopular opinion. Lost Caverns only good because of the playable chase cards. The set alone isn't that great. See, disagree. The set has amazing mechanics for both limited and all of the formats it gets played in. Like, we complain about Cascade and just like, I don't know, spoiler alert, we like to play Cascade cards. The theme is on point. Even the subset is holding value and people are collecting it. So I don't know. I, I think what you stated is a major part of the reason why it holds value for sure. Like the take that sets with good cards do well is something I am all in on. Like if a set has good cards and we like to play them, it's going to do well. I think that's the era of magic that we live in. But it, I, Lost Caverns goes beyond that, in my opinion, and it does a really good job of doing so. So I am I'm really interested to see how that's going to go. Seven Foot, I love the content, but recently game of but recently game up on MTG for Janky Commander. I'm all in on Fab. Play Pokemon with my two kids. Nice. Okay. I think yours gave up, I think is what you mean. Ah, uh, 
we've all had we've all gone through a phase just always i would encourage you to always keep your magic stuff because you can walk into a game store and it's always going to be there but i hear you i would like to see collector booster with everyone having a you know, card uh, number to 20 every card is a possible number out of 20 i don't know if i like every card but i see what you're saying like limited limited serialized cards and you guys know on this channel i'm a big i'm a i'm a serialized card believer i'm a big serialized card believer rt n65 and you notice that on the sub i watch your videos often oh rt well thank you for the subscription welcome welcome to the community welcome to the hometown tcg community consider joining the discord for free and hanging out with all of us as uh we post a lot in there i'm trying to get that going and we're trying to build build a little foundation build a little foundation of a community so let's check back to on another really popular standard set that went through a rough time with wilds of eldraine wilds of eldraine was was a unique one now this the difference in wilds of eldraine if we were to look at just gross numbers and this is why i don't like to do this was wilds of eldraine started before the data project was go undergoing some automation so because of that there aren't commander decks in wilds of eldraine so when you see this this massive difference no this was pre adding commander decks to the tracking system because a lot of it was done by hand this is when the theory was just going to be draft set and collector and now with an automation process it can be everything it's there's no manual uh, intervention there's nothing like that so that's why we see a differentiation so don't focus on if, if that makes sense the gap in these two numbers as much because they're less meaningful without you know the commander decks for lost caverns like the commander deck set will have sold uh the these are four copies of every deck so that's 899 times four for total boxes that moved out the out the door so just to give you an idea of of what that looks like but more importantly like where did the price of this product go because for a while for a while the price of of wilds of eldraine especially the collector booster box was not doing great and like this thing's just on the mend on the recovery a decent sell-through rate we're moving product out the door and the price is just stable so we see products and magic can undergo a dip and recovery in this day and age too i mean we see that with old magic uh, when i say old i mean 2023 not not old magic not like vintage magic but like i uh, dominaria remastered look dominaria remastered collector booster boxes coming up from the 150 mark it's just wild it's wild dmr dominaria remastered draft booster boxes jump from 97 to 105 in less than 30 minutes the sale is going to be fun did it really did it really i listen i we don't hate remastered sets we just got burned by the amazon dump of this product and wizards of the ghost to their credit like hey quiet nobody jinx it nobody jinx it but we haven't seen a viable true amazon dump in quite some time nobody nobody jinx it For sure, it's tough to have played only MTG since 97. I feel like this is my renaissance, more focused on writing stories for tabletop RPGs. Oh yeah, dude. It, when I tell you, encourage you not to like, I'm not saying, come back to magic, don't do what you like. No, do what you like to do. Hit. It's a good stream message. Do what you like to do. Just don't, I would never burn a bridge personally. Now we're talking IRL stuff. I would just never burn a bridge that I just can't go back across, right? I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to be like in 10 years from now. I don't, I, I don't support flesh and blood anymore. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like the company. I don't like the leadership in that organization. I have my stuff. Not only does it remind me of a time that I got to hang out with, make a ton of friends in my life, but like, you, you, I just, I don't know my, I don't know myself. Right? I don't know what I'm going to be like in 10 years. So I like to keep that open. But that's just me. I, I would encourage people to do the do the same there. That's just my opinion, though. Like, what do I know? Yeah, 360. Good morning. Welcome. I saw Yeah jumped in the Discord. Good morning, Yeah. What's up? Going to lurk while I work. Got a lot of driving to do. Good luck. Yeah, listen, this is this can be a pocket live stream. This can be a pocket live stream. Do what you got to do, my friend. Thanks for hanging out. Hasbro did say they're reducing their inventory. The dumps were just time for adjustment of them. Yeah, they wanted to get off of all the extra stuff they were overprinting for sure. Now's your last chance to get cheap MetaZoo product. Go nuts. Alexandra says, hi, Josh. I think I'm the only French, French who follow you. Let's go. All the way from France. Are you from France? Are you in France, France right now? 
Are you in France right now? Are we truly global? Hold on. If you're in France right now, I need you to do something for me. This is gonna be cheesy. I need you to do something for me. I need you to reach your beverage of choice and cheers from across the globe. Cheers. Pink. Cheers from across the freaking globe. My goodness. That's awesome. Cheers from across the globe. Wow. That's incredible. We internet, listen, this is how you know we've made it. We've still got the new TCGs to talk about today. This has been a wild morning so far. But for those who might want MetaZoo, you know, I see some MetaZoo chat in there. Yeah, if you want some MetaZoo Cryptidation first edition, you know, Yoko, I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up. Only like two thousand dollars a box. Like I totally got you. Harold says it's funny even aftermath is slowly coming back up. I also I noticed this as well. I'm just letting letting this scrape around. Let's see where we're at in the process. Aftermath is slowly creeping back up. So here we go. What was once the worst set in Magic the Gathering, like by far, is like, like in February sold 183 boxes of after, like who? Who did this? Who did this? Which one of you absolute mad humans bought Aftermath in February? Was it Yoko? I feel like it might have been Yoko. It was all Yoko. DCG Captain, I think our channel has gone global like all over the world. That would be sweet. Listen, it would be amazing. The the more audience, like the wider audience and the more perspective we have, I am. That's I'm all game on that. Who bought this? Old world Mcback just got paid. What should I buy? This is not a financial advice channel. This is not a financial advice channel. <laughs> this is not a financial advice channel. Ah! Ah! Dodge that! Oh no! Oh no! I, I have whatever. Listen, I, I have I've always said my for those if we have new viewers in the chat, for those who know, my theory on sealed product is I collect what makes me smile, what I enjoy, what has meaning in my life, and I also go for versatility. You see a lot of set box back here, you see a lot of draft boxes on the main shelf. Because like if it all falls apart, I can still find seven friends, get together and draft the box and play some magic. Like so I don't know. I, I'm I'm terrible at giving you advice what to buy. You know, I I have player I have a binder full of player rewards promos, half finished collection. I have I did a post in the Discord. I bought four foil ops when I was on TCG player just because I thought they looked cool, which is not a great way to go about browsing TCG player. I did the same for negate right afterwards. So like that's a cool little card. I bought original foil ops, a card that's been printed a million times I spent like a hundred dollars on near mint ops like I I am not the one to ask I do not spend money well on TC I'm I'm the only person in the entire universe buying Brothers War serialized cards I'm the only I'm the only person on planet earth do not ask me what to buy I'm bad at it <laughs> Josh Smith says deranged hermit TCG captain said, folks, <laughs> you should buy whatever happy product. We're fun and collecting. I Listen, I think the next two play boosters are going to be cool. I, I, I don't know like the long-term value, but like the ability to go back and redraft the first and second play booster ever would be cool. And I think I, I wouldn't buy, me personally, I'm not buying um, Outlaws yet. go let's just go to the full set i'm not buying outlaws of thunder junction yet it, it it feels it feels like the the drop in prices is, is imminent now tcg player bonus bucks this could be a big day for this set at as to this point this set has god let's see to this point this set has been vastly disappointing like these are indie TCG numbers. 
this is this is not good like the most selling product is the commander deck set like this has not been good so i i think when enough of this moves through the market or if enough of it doesn't you're gonna get um you're gonna get hammered are you gonna attend an outlaws pre-release event i'd like to it's tough it's tough with the kiddo friday night is a lot of like family time family night so getting out to friday night magic is tough for me because after working all week it's nice to like spend time with my family and just just to like me and my kid just play so i i love i'd love to it would have to depend if i took the thursday off beforehand and could just like spend all thursday with cam and just hang out i probably would be more more incentivized to go if that makes sense but like pre-release is some of my most favorite time in any tcg i i'm almost down i just said early in the stream i don't really support fab anymore i don't again i don't like the company i don't like the leadership i there's a lot i guess i want to say about that that i just i try to avoid the negativity but i would go to fab pre-release because like pre-release events are fun i just like tcg i'm addicted to tcg pre-release events the energy in the room the excitement like opening packs rushing to sleeve something up like that to me is so much fun i'm not buying outlaws or price drops considered but set boosters are more worth to me okay set okay so you're you're on the set booster train everyone's saving up for mh3 like you were waiting for the drop yeah I, I i don't know and again we're this is not a financial price or financial advice channel but like this seems high right so I'm not TCG agnostic. I'm TCG agnostic when it comes to going to a release event. Release events are just fun. Like, I don't care who you are. There's, if you ever, has anybody ever been to a release event and had a genuinely bad time? I just, I just haven't. It's never hyper competitive or sweaty, but it's still like, you're, you're still trying to win. Like, that's okay, but you're not getting spiked. You're not getting sharked. I, this would be my, this would be my presidential platform. If we were to get onto a platform, like, ladies and gentlemen, we should have more TCG release events as they will bring us together as a nation, as a people, because you can't not have fun at a TCG release event. I, that would be my entire presidential platform. Like, let's just release a new TCG event, a, a new set for some TCG every Friday and people would just be happier. Like, <laughs> the place smelled the high heaven I couldn't hang. Oh, yeah, I mean, sure. I So I've never had that. You always hear the stories. I've never had that. That's that's never something I've experienced. I've only heard the stories. MTG pre-release and release limited events are a lot of fun. The only time to be creative. I don't think that's true. I don't, again, now, now this is going to become a Discord pub session. I posted in the Discord, I was playing Arena this week, and I won, like, games with the card, a Traitorous Greed. Sack a creature that dealt damage, you draw three cards, gain three life, deals three damage to an opponent. It's it's a super niche card. It's an Orzhov Instant, no one's playing it. Like, there is so much opportunity. There's so much chance to, like, build new and fun things. You will never climb to the top 1% of players, but, like, you can play in in platinum you can play at your friday night magic you can play at release events you can do all with so many creative and fun strategies i have i don't know if i have them in arm's reach i have two pioneer decks that i take with me everywhere and it's rogues and wizards and you play rogues and wizards against one another in magic like they're, they're wonderful pioneer decks i've taken them to friday night magics i've i've two one i've three one like it, any it's so much fun the the idea that like this, and I feel like this comes from the new, like, indie TCG community. Like, and I saw this when I was leaving the last community. I was, you had to bring the best deck every single week because you're you're prepping for your big event or you're calling nationals, whatever. Like, you're, you're doing all this prep, and it's like, that's not what it has to be. You can just bring, like, a new strategy for, like, fun and go two and one or one and two and, like, find out some things about the deck and have a conversation and just enjoy yourself. And you can do that without Commander. I know. It's crazy. I've never done a pre-release. My first sealed last week was was sorcery. Yeah, you've never done a pre-release. You got to get out to a pre-release event. Everyone needs to encourage yeah to get out to a pre-release event of some kind. Everybody, 
everybody in this community needs to encourage you to get out to a pre-release because it's some of the most fun it's some of the most fun you can have it's important to note i have the outlaws up still on the second monitor here and look who the look who the retailer is oh who who could have foreseen this who could have foreseen this all right all right let's talk some other tcg let's see how this the process is running in the background grab and magic run lord of the rings special edition that everyone tells me is the greatest set ever and is pumping to the moon we'll see we'll see i gotta see how many boxes of that are selling we'll see let's let's just put it that way let's just put it that way we'll see we'll see i don't know i don't know if i believe you. all right outlaws of thunder junction gonna be interesting everyone knows what i want to check out The best time I had playing was back in Texas in the 90s, drinking and laughing. Yeah, like, you're just hanging out. You're just having a good time. Let's let's get to the bottom of what I want to get to the bottom of real quick. I want to look at Pokemon. I want to know. I've heard. I've only heard how great Pokemon is. I've only heard how great Pokemon is. And in a vacuum, these are the Pokemon numbers. But... <clears throat> we have built a tool outside of the vacuum that we can use to compare releases. Imagine this. Imagine this. We can compare releases. So we'll take, you know, Pokemon Temporal Forces and let's compare it against, oh, what was a terrible Magic the Gathering set? Arloff Manor. Sure, that's a good one. Let's check out pre-release numbers. And well, 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 mm, what do we see here? Official release day for Pokemon Temporal Forces is today. So this is the entirety of pre-release this is all of the pokemon temporal forces product that had sold on tcg player for pre-release and like i was told this was supposed to be this was supposed to be a blowout i don't know i don't like it i don't like it yeah rtm and again better worse it's all it's all subjective and pokemon and magic both sell more off tcg player than they do on tcg player 100 percent. this is just weird like karloff manor was about as bad as it got for some time and again there's there's a tcg player element to this right they both sell off tcg player this was just i i wasn't a big fan of this and it's like how they and fates didn't pre-release well 151 pre-released better but like what pokemon has in my opinion is not the pre-release it does and where it beats magic where it does better than magic the gathering is in consistent sales so let's check this out here paldean fates we'll do paldean fates paradox rift Pokemon doesn't have the massive cliff drop-off that Magic the Gathering has because they're not trying to spit 5 million products at you every two seconds all the time, right? They don't have this massive drop-off. The people are in tune with the product. They're emotionally connected with the product. And because of that, the sales continue for longer. Now, we do see, like, the most popular products are a $40 box, right? It's not, they're not, not everybody's buying a ton of everything, but... That's the big win for Pokemon, is this more general, gradual fall-off and more entry-level product, more accessibility than Magic the Gathering. Or if we look at something like Magic, let's take a look at... Um, what's what's a good standard set you think to take a look at? I mean, Doctor Who is not a standard set, but it's, it's a good example of like, like, oh man, we were selling. Oh, okay, we're done. We're on to the next thing. Magic does this very frequently, where it's... Hey, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling, and we're on to the next thing. Oh, that was the details to break down the box prices here. That's not what I want. I want the summary. 
right? Oh, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling the best product. We're done. We're done. Like we're on, we're on to the next thing, right? We see this a lot with Magic, so it's just interesting to see. I, I think Pokemon's gonna have a moment where all of a sudden things are are printed in let's call it much smaller numbers. Oh my goodness. The scraper is on Ravnica Remastered right now. Oh. Oh, Ravnica Remastered. Oh, old Ravnica Remastered. Let's also, while we're here, check out, like, Lord of the Rings Special Edition. Here's another one. Like, it's booming. It's booming. It's going crazy. Well, there was only 270 total boxes sold in all of March so far, right? February 404. Now, these are better numbers than other sets, but it's not, like... It's not like crazy. You want to see a, another boom. You want to see a, a secondary backup boom, if you will. Look no further than the original Lord of the Rings when the bundles went on sale in December. And all of a sudden there was 4,000 boxes sold out of nowhere in December. The interesting part of this product, too, is it's led by the collector booster box. The most expensive product is leading the charge for number of boxes sold. It's pretty crazy. Zendro, happy Friday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I like Pokemon only because their pro decks are like 50 bucks. Anytime a deck wins a tournament, Pokemon sells the entire deck list. I, listen, I'm not I'm not here saying Magic's better than Pokemon. Pokemon's better than Magic. I'm not doing that. I am... Oh, hey, whoa. Whoa. I need to check the logs. We just had a server error. All right, I got to check the server logs. Add that to my notes. What just happened? So I'm not here to say that both games do things well. It's just interesting to see the spot Pokemon's in with so many products at the accessible level of 40, 50, 30 dollars. I would think you'd see like a greater number of products sold because Magic Magic's big criticism, right? There's no, you, it's very hard to spend 40 bucks efficiently as a Magic the Gathering fan. It's very easy to do it as a Pokemon fan. You go buy an ETB, right? And ETBs are a lot of fun. People like ETBs, so I don't know, that's just my that's just my opinion. Pokemon is a good game, no question. It's not for me. I'll only look at the numbers. Yeah, for me too. I'm not I'm not interested in playing Pokemon. To be honest with you, that's probably not uh, somewhere I'll go. Uh, Josh Smith, same Yoko. I just can't buy every set anymore. I have to be starting to pay more, pay more attention to the community's response to the upcoming sets. That's why we do what we do, Josh. Let's go, let's go. That's why we do what we do. God, I, you love you love to hear it. That you'll love to hear that. I can't make money on boxers. Singles can't justify buying. That's one hundred percent true. You're we're just buying for the fun of it at this point. The, the as as they say, the the tendies are gone from our side of the desk, and that's okay. Like that's okay. There's still you can find little spots here and there to get some value, but for the most part, that's just how it is, and that makes sense. <sighs> Another thing, just going strong. March of the machine, just marching along, man. Just march along. How did Phyrexia all be one dude? To me, that seemed like the last standard set that did really well. Well, Lost Caverns of Ixalan RT is a set, and Lost Caverns of Ixalan is pumping. Pumping. But Phyrexia all will be one. This set is dominated by maybe the best magic product of 2023. The complete bundle. This set, and this is what. These numbers right here are without commander decks. So in the same, remember when we looked at, we looked at Wilds of Eldraine. And we said, oh, these don't have commander decks. Make sure to keep that into account. This is without, this is without commander decks. This is without commander decks. And like, look, the next best selling product. It's not the tendies. It's not the collector booster box. It's the set booster box that people buy just a crack pack selling at an average price of a very healthy $122 over its lifetime. God, what a great set. What a great set. What an absolute dub. Absolute dub for Exia All Will Be One. You know, not, not, to, not to toot my own horn too much, but Brothers War also. Also no slouch here. Led by, not the tendies. By the set booster box. Gosh, this still sells like November. It sold 200 boxes. December 194, 223. The crazy thing about the Brothers War to me. Let's see if let's see if this is done. If we can, how close are we to getting Star Wars numbers in here? The crazy thing about Brothers War is the price. Look at this thing go down and then back. Look at that dip. 
That's crazy. That right there is crazy. Like, the return of this product, the comeback, the don't call it a comeback king, the Brothers War, even the set booster box, man, on the come up, on the come up. Brothers was really good. Yeah, for sure. Phyrexia Brothers, I was saying this till I was blue in the face last year, and this feels so good. Like, these sets were better than we were giving them credit for. The sets were tons of cards we're seeing play. We were cracking the boxes. There was collectibles in there. And the price was still too cheap. It was all because of the Wizards of the Coast Amazon dump. It was 100% just the Amazon dump. Right? Like, that was it. Once I got my first full paycheck, I'm getting Collector Booster Box of Brothers War since I want a serialized card. Then, yeah, I would encourage you, just scour eBay and buy a serialized card. You can find them for pretty cheap. You can make bid offers. A lot of times, you'll see the same seller will have the card up for a long time. I would encourage you personally, my best my best advice is to buy them in person. There's a lot of negotiating space for serialized cards. Like, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of negotiating space. At MagicCon Chicago, I was getting like half price deals. Pretty close to half price. Because people were like, we, we don't want this serialized card. Just buy it. Get out. Like, for sure. Did you notice a few months ago the Kaldheim Elf Precon Commander deck uh, jump from fifteen twenty to a hundred dollars. Is that true? Caldime was before before we were tracking. Was that true? Let's see. Hold on. Let's put Yoko to the test. We're putting Yoko to the test. Yoko on the spot, baby. Yoko on the spot. This is my favorite. Yoko on the spot. Is it not? Does Caldime not even have an elf precon? And you're just messing with us. Yoko on the spot, baby. They have theme boosters. They have theme boosters. Hold on. I'm seeing theme boosters. Am I missing the precons? I don't see precons. All right, hold on. Hold on. We found the precons. Hold on. We found the precons. Yoko, you're safe for now. Yeah, <laughs> Yoko, there's only four. Look at this thing. Why is this pumping? It is Galdime. It's here. Why is this pumping? Someone in chat. <laughs> Why? Hold on, hold on. I gotta ask a resident commander expert. Hold on, I have a re hold on. I have a resident commander expert to ask hold on one second stand by all right I, I i have the question out to a community commander expert somewhere someone far more qualified than me to answer this question. Someone who would be in the know is plugged in. Somebody who gets it. Somebody who just has the, when it comes to commander, just has it. Well, half of the somebodies that when it comes to commander just has it. You get my gist. I asked the question, we'll see. All right, wait for that answer. That's crazy. Let's make sure. Let's see if we can gather some Star Wars data. Ooh, what's this? Hopefully it's not Louie because he only knows what we tell him. It's not Louie. It's not, it's not Louie. It's not Louie. I, I would ask Louie, but I don't, Louie's not awake yet. I know that. I love. I would ask Louie. Louie's a game store owner. Louie's very plugged in. I would 100% ask Louie. He's not up yet. No, I... I reached out to the the real pros in the scene. Louis like semi pro. I'm amateur. These are the real pros in the scene. Is that, it's a uh, you guys might know a little channel named Jake and Joel. They they know commander stuff. So I gotta know when if I have a commander question about product. That's that's who I ask because that's the channel that like 
they're plugged in, baby. They they would know. They'd be like, oh, yeah, this happened on this date, and it was this much, and this is why. And I'm like, oh, God, okay. So ask, we'll, ask the, we'll ask the experts. We will, we'll, we'll ask the experts. All right, let's grab Star Wars Unlimited data, and then let's, we're going to have to call this stream, we're going to have to call it a wrap soon here. We'll do this, we'll talk Lorcana, then we got to call it a wrap, because, my goodness. Except Louie probably has this deck 50% off table at the shop, checking today. Oh my goodness. Do not, do not use, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's do it together. Gamegrove.gg, Magic the Gathering, sealed product. Magic the Gathering, let's see. How does he sort his inventory? Set. He's only got one Caldine product. Not gonna do it. Is it listed as Commander Caldine, maybe? Nope. Nope, sorry. For the longest time, it was a place to get Lathril IIRC. Then the price of the Lathril tank for the Lord of the Tins came out. I didn't tell you, Josh, buy him out. I didn't tell Louie. Josh, buy him out. He doesn't have it, boys. Doesn't have it. Ask George, who's there during his founding. He's just the only member if you get him drunk enough to access the memory cores. <laughs> There's a whole table of precons. Buy one, get one free. All right, Donald. All right, hook me up. Hook me up. Hook me up, let me know. Hook me up, let me know. All right, we're getting Spark of Rebellion data flowing in now. Let's go Disney Lorcana. This will be the entire vault updated for the morning of Let's check let's check out Spark of Rebellion at least before we go. We have Disney Lorcana. I know Donald wants to check out some singles prices, so we'll do that before we leave too. Woo! What a live stream this morning. What a live stream. Thank you guys for hanging out. Again, if you're enjoying stuff, if you enjoy things like this, if you enjoy kind of the mission we're on, consider joining the channel membership, helping support this cause, helping support this project, and helping support me at Hometown TCG. To all of the channel members that tune in every single stream, cheers. Thank you all so very much for doing your part and just, you know, helping make this possible so the server costs don't completely just come out of my pocket. All right, let's check Star Wars Unlimited. Here we go. Enchanted Elsa has hit one Elsa to 1K? Oh, Elsa to 1K, baby. Star Wars Unlimited, the number of boxes are continuing to sell, led by the draft booster box for the average cost of 95.28. But here's the real thing. Where's it at right now? How low can it go? I am selling box openings to channel members, $120. Everything shipped to your door. So if you buy a booster box opening for $120, that includes, there is no tax, that includes everything, is $120 shipped to your door with all of the cards, tax, shipping, everything included, if you are a channel member. So just another way to continue to give back to the channel members. Disney Lorcana Into the Inklands. I have two more box openings for Into the Inklands as well for channel members. I already, I just two left, and that's all I've got for Into the Inklands. And that's $115, everything shipped to your door no taxes you get a paypal invoice i pay the paypal fees you don't have to deal with that it's just my way of trying to give back to our community here but man look wait what's that is tcg player broken hold on i've never seen this what's happening what's happening what's happening okay here we go <laughs> TCG player was broken there. I don't know what's happening. There's the sale today. Yeah, baby. Got the 8% store credit. Number of boxes going to sell. Look at this. 
322. Look at that, just already this morning. That's just this morning. We started this we started this process at 8 a.m. Central Time. Look at this thing popping out. Like just everyone's just buying boxes. The problem here you have is you do have some some gates, some very serious gates to get through. Yeti gaming selling at 132.99 and having 35 boxes that people have to get through, right? Like there's some serious gates. I don't see a price spike. I don't see this thing. It gets lag on high, high volume these days. Got to reload. Yeah, I mean, like, listen, it's got a ton of products going, like, flowing through it at all times. But how, this is going to be 100% a high volume day. I'm, from the excess product going out, you would think maybe the fancy cards are going to get a little cheaper. Maybe the fancy cards are going to get a little bit cheaper. Maybe there'll be some opportunity to pick some stuff up at an affordable price. You'll love to see it. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay. Oh God. Okay. I thought someone said it's, this is what I, I can't stand about this. I have to constantly go through and fix the data for things like Pokemon and Disney Lorcana. Cause everyone's like, look, it's 12 loose packs and it's for sale in the booster box area. It's like, what are we doing? Why is this allowed TCG player? Why is this allowed? We sh this should not be allowed. Like you should not be able to do this. This is this is very this is very annoying. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. All right, before we hang up today, because we have blown over our time, but that's okay. I want to start. I want to check a couple of Disney lore kind of things. Remember, if you want a booster box of Star Wars, I think I have four Star Wars boxes left. Out of the two cases, no, I think I yeah, I think I have four boxes left. Oh my god, I have four boxes left. Good Lord. Anyway, if you want one of those, make sure you reach out to me in Discord. I'll ask if you're a channel member, you get the special price. If not, there'll be extra shipping and taxes on top. But I always try to make the channel membership worth it. So thank you again for the support. Let's check the first chapter. This booster box is still just going nuts. I don't understand. Like in March, we looked at the number of products sold for various games. In March, the first chapter alone sold 1,500 boxes. People like this product, man. I'm going to need that one piece of Pokemon for about 350 Hey, if you got $350, I'll get you some Pokemon. You you can have some Pokemon. Shout out, Nico. Gentle member, Nico. Homie, Nico. I went and had pizza with Nico just yesterday. And we lifted weights together, and the guy is an absolute beast in the weight room. Welcome, Nico. This is the cra the craziest part of the first chapter here as we as we wind up the stream. You know, we we do we have to wind down. I, I have to leave and go to work eventually. Is this the crazy price spike, the reprint coming down and then back up baby. Up up we go and the number of products sold is still God, this is really healthy. Like in March this year we sold 457 boxes so far. A first chapter, a set that's not even, it's not the recent set. It's not the live release. Like, what are we doing? This is crazy. Now, things do get hairy with Floodborne, right? Floodborne comes down a little bit, but like even Floodborne has stabilized. The prices are stable and the sell-through rate is really healthy. These, these, like it or not, like it or not, baby, Disney Lorcana kind of crushing it, right? Like it, love it, hate it. Disney Lorcana kind of crushing it right now. Oh, snap. Hey, Louie is awake. Shout out, Louie. <laughs> I feel like I've never been able to survive going to Chicago, but just don't like tomato on my hot dogs. If you ask for no tomato, you'll be okay. Just yeah, you, The cardinal sin is don't ask for ketchup. That's the cardinal sin. We're going to look at the Enchanteds uh, before we go, because I know we talked to uh, Donald over at Scruffy Looking Gaming. Donald, are you still making YouTube videos? Are you still making YouTube videos or do I stop pumping your channel? I'm down. I'm down. I'm down to pump the homie. <laughs> yeah, said it like that on purpose because it's funny. All right, let's see. Gotcha. Yeah, dude, it's it's, it's a lot. You gotta you gotta love it. And if you don't, hey, I support that too. Let's look at some enchanted. Let's look cards. We're gonna go price high to low. 
all of our enchanted cards. Our cheapest enchanted card sitting at Hades, $109. $109 enchanted card. That's not bad. $121, $119. But this is the big one. Elsa to 1K. No way. Elsa to 1K. I did not see this coming. I did not see Elsa hitting 1K already. That's crazy. That's And it's, it's only up from there. Like... Elsa at 1K, and it's only up from there. Oh, look, the PS, a PSA 10 sold for $2,200 here. My goodness, this is popping off. There's only 1K if someone pays. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, sure, but just yesterday, 993, we're seven bucks away. I'm willing to call it. I think I might be willing to call it. I think I might be willing to call it. Elsa at 1K, and then we jump up quickly from there. That's wild. Look at that. I did not see that coming. In fairness, we'll check Rise really quick before we call it. This is where now, we, now we've got a massive difference, right? Now we're into a, a significantly less popular set. And then Into the Inklands. I think actually we see Into the Inklands has a bit of an uptick. A little bit more stability. Yeah, we've got a little bit more stability at the top uh, coming down. These, uh, the location cards. These are pretty cool. So, God, the price card looks so good. All right. This has been wild. I do have to get to work. What a wild stream. If you were here, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Big cheers. Never mind, guess she has. Let's go. Elsa to 1K. Ralph. Nick. Nick, I'm late, dude. I I am on my way. Nick, I am on my way to finishing my coffee. If you haven't yet, there's a pinned link in the, the chat for joining the Discord. Make sure you join the Discord. We're going to continue the fun all week long in the Discord. I have just ended the poll. Oh, 31 votes. The Coffee Crew, coming today, the Coffee Crew channel. And by, I'll, I'll give you the ability to mute it if you don't want. I'll, we'll send pictures of coffee. We'll chat all things caffeine and getting through our work week. Thank you so much for hanging out to all of the channel members. If I, if, if I missed you, if I didn't name your name, thank you so much for hanging out to everyone else who just joined today. If you subscribed, if this was your first stream, if this was your 40th stream, this has been a blast. I appreciate you each and every week. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh, and we will see you around. All right. Goodbye.